Hi guys, it's Mark Zikri, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zikri of Space Command. And today, I'm going to be talking about movies. But it'll be somewhat different from <laughs> the way I've talked about movies on other Mr. Sci-Fi commentaries. Now, for some of you, what I'm going to talk about, you'll nod and say, yep, that's how it was. And for others, the younger uh, uh, fans of Mr. Sci-Fi, it'll be a wake-up call. It'll be something you're, you're surprised to hear about. So, now, when I was a kid reading science fiction, they talked about utopias or dystopias, and I would uh, wonder what the 21st century would be like and envision it, you know, flying cars, all of that. Uh, you know, I, I think, about, gosh, 2015, that, that's so far in the future, and, uh, and what will that be like? I mean, we'll obviously have our moon base and our Mars base and all of these wonderful things that I saw in uh, Star Trek in 2001 and so forth, and here we are in 2015, and it's very different in many ways from the science fiction that I grew up with, but there's one way in which we are living in a utopia right now and no one even notices. And uh, that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about how movies used to be when I was a kid, when I was growing up. And so, so first I'll, talk, I'll, I'll just kind of walk you through it and then we'll, then we'll, we'll talk about it. But first let me preface it by this way. Yesterday, uh, basically I was, I was uh, checking out three different movies. I um, I watched the interview, which I downloaded, and uh, and it's it's a fun movie. It's, it's actually goofy, and you know, it's uh, I'm about halfway through it, and uh, but I downloaded it. It took a few moments to download, and I just started watching it on my 55-inch big screen color television. I also looked at a little bit of Blade Runner because my Blade Runner gun came in the mail. We'll talk about that later. It's <laughs> but uh, I was checking out Blade Runner. I've been watching Blade Runner in French, which is way fun. French with with English subtitles. It really changes your perception of the movie, and. Um, and then I also went to with Elaine to see Black Sea at the um, at the ArcLight in Hollywood. And Black Sea is a great thriller with Jude Law, submarine movie. I love submarine movies, and uh, and with all three, one which was on a big screen with 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 surround sound in a gorgeous movie theater with popcorn. Always have popcorn. Uh, the other was on my big screen TV, downloadable, and the third was a Blu-ray DVD, also on my big screen TV. All of them were gorgeous prints, absolutely perfect, no scratches, no glitches, terrific sound, terrific picture, and every time I, I would view these films, uh, it would be the same experience. And with Black Sea, it, which I liked if I wanted to buy it, in a few months it will be available where I can buy it, and I can watch it any time I want. And uh, and this is true of any film that I want to see, I can watch it any time I want. Yeah, unless it's some really esoteric, peculiar thing. Now, that is not how it used to be. When I was a kid, here's how it would work. Um, there were two uh, theaters I would go to as a kid, primarily. One was the Moralta, and one was the Culver. And the Culver was 50 cents for kids, and the Moralta was 25 cents. So that's one way things were better. The prices were significantly lower. Now, this, this was an era of, of wonderful science fiction films, so I may, might be going to a movie theater to see one of the triumvirate of great uh, Charlton Heston science fiction movies, The Omega Man, Soil and Green, uh, Planet of the Apes, or uh, 2001 might be screening. Uh, and generally these were double bills, except, you know, with uh, 2001, which I saw at the Pacific Theater in Hollywood. That was a, because it was such a long movie, that was shown as a single film, and it was spectacular in 70 millimeter uh, when it first came out. And these prints would be uh, beautiful when they, on the day they came out. You'd watch them and sound would be in stereo, the, it would be a 35 millimeter print, it would look good. But very quickly, if you went back to see the movie over, over a week or two, you know, the print would start to get scratchy, it might have broken, so they might have had to edit it, so it'd be, there'd be a jump cut. If the projectionist wasn't on his game, he wouldn't switch over the reels in time, or every now and then a reel would be shown in the wrong order. And then <clears throat> as you went to the, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the, the second and third run houses, you know, a movie <clears throat> would start to look pretty grainy and scratchy, and it would be a terrible print. And... Uh, and, you, and, and every now and then the film would jam and you'd watch as the film burned, uh, which was always a horrific experience. And then they might just stop the movie and you wouldn't be able to see the rest of your film. Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, you couldn't see the movie again once it stopped playing at the movie theater because they, you know, they, you, they, they generally didn't have revival houses. And if they were going to bring a movie back again, it may be years later before it was re-released to theaters, if ever. And uh, so that relegated films to television. And that was back when there were three networks and a handful of local stations and PBS. So with the exception of PBS, <clears throat> movies were shown with commercials and they were also shown heavily edited. And you never knew what, what was edited. You never knew what was taken out. And so in some cases it would just be you didn't know if the movie was inexplicable because it was inexplicable or because they'd taken out an important plot element for time to run more commercials. And there was one 
local station. It may have been Ben Hunter's uh, matinee where they just showed the movie. Let's say it was a 90-minute movie, and they needed to fit it into a 65-minute slot to air it with commercials. They would just lop off the first part of the movie up until 65 minutes in. So, uh, so you would watch movies, and they would start in the middle. And the characters would be in love, or they'd be on the run from the bad guy. You had no idea who they were, what had happened. I saw hundreds of movies like this. And, uh, and so, so watching films was this continual experience of frustration. And worst of all, because I was a science fiction aficionado, the, uh, the films I longed to see that I'd read about in fi Famous Monsters of Filmland and, and, and other uh, fan magazines uh, would only air late at night. And so, you know, If the Terror from Beyond Space or uh, Howard Hawks' The Thing, you know, you'd, you'd, I'd wait up as a kid, 10 years old, in my pajamas. Uh, it'd be 11 at night, the, mov the movie would start. And maybe for the first 15 or 20 minutes, they would show it without commercials. And you'd think, oh boy, this is going to be great. And then they started the commercials. And very quickly, they'd be airing more and more and more commercials until there were more commercials than the movie. And so it'd become midnight, and then 1 a.m., and then 2 a.m., and it would be agony. And they would be the same commercials over and over. Often uh, Cal Worthington, who had Worthington Ford and Worthington Dodge, uh, he was this used car salesman who wore a cowboy hat and literally talked out of the side of his mouth. And it would be just anguish. And, and you'd be desperately trying to stay awake, and often I would fail that test and fall asleep or just throw in the towel. And so there were many, many, many films where I never saw the ending. And I remember longing for future where you could have films, you could watch them whenever you wanted, whatever you wanted, and yeah, it would be on your big screen TV on the wall. You know, Fahrenheit 451, Ray Bradbury had wall screen TVs, and that was a dystopic novel, but I thought those wall screen TVs looked pretty great. And, uh, and I, so I longed for a future where I could watch movies anytime I wanted on, a, on my big screen wall TV or, or perhaps even carry them in a screen in my pocket, like, you know, like Star Trek had the tricorder. And, uh, or, or in 2001, they had these little things that looked very much like an iPad, and they were watching the BBC on that. So, uh, so and here we are, 2015, the future, and we, and we have these things. We can, we can have all of Federico Fellini's films in our collection and watch them whenever we want, or Ingmar Bergman, or, or, or the Star Trek, all the Star Trek movies. Or, or, you know, I have a wall of DVDs, and, uh, and now with Netflix and all these wonderful other, uh, other other uh, platforms we can we can watch whatever we want whenever we want it and and maybe there's some esoteric film like Ikari XB1 a, a, a Czechoslovakian science fiction film you can hunt it down you can go on eBay or you can go on Amazon and you can find these things that you've only heard about that you'd, you've heard about for years that used to be impossible to find and so now it's not just the cineasts with their 16 millimeter prints stacked high in vaults that have uh, that have their own collections of films and we can share this wonderful world art form and have gorgeous prints, perfect sound, uh, whenever we want. And that really is a science fiction dream come true. And I'm glad that we all can share that. And, and you can be listening to me or hearing me <laughs> wherever you are in the world, whenever you are in the world. Perhaps it's 2115 where you are. And, uh, and we, can, we, can, uh, we can really share all of these things. And, and the print of me that you're watching may be shot on a little handheld iPhone, but there aren't any scratches, there aren't any jump cuts, and I'm not going to melt into a frame where you can't see the rest of this. So, <laughs> and uh, so that's it for now. We still have popcorn. That's one good thing that's lasted, but in many, many ways, we have a wonderful, wonderful world of cinema uh, that we can all share. So, that's it. Talk to you next time. I just wanted to let you know how it was, how it is now, and how I dreamed it would be. And uh, welcome to the future. Bye bye. <laughs>